Oh, hi there. So in this video, I'm going to talk about event dispatchers and event forwarding. And I'm going to start with really simple examples and then get more complex as the video goes on. So first thing we have here is just a button component. And all it does is adds a style right here because we want all our buttons to have this border. So from up here, you might think you could on click button and something would happen, uh, but it doesn't because this is just a Svelte component that happens to be named button. It's not an actual HTML button. Okay, so how do we get this event um, to be called when we click on this button. So one thing we can do is create a um, event dis dispatcher. So create event dispatcher. So import this from Svelte and then const dispatch, or it can be whatever you want it to be called. Create event dispatcher. This is a function. Okay, so now we're going to dispatch the click event. So on click function dispatch click. Okay, so this is dispatching the click. It's basically telling the parent, hey, I've been clicked. And this event sort of bubbles up to the parent. Okay, so now on click um, this, uh, the from the parent, you can handle what's going on. Okay, so that's one example. Let's say we want to have two buttons. So our button component actually has two buttons in it. So how would we do this? So they're both click. So I guess they'll both dispatch this click event. So it doesn't matter which one I click, they'll both uh, go uh, be handled this way. But let's say we want to know which one's being clicked. So we want on click one says clicked one, and then we want an on click two to say clicked two. How would we do that? So think about that for a second. Okay, I'll tell you. So here we would do on click dispatch click two, click one. So this can be named anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be an actual event name. So click one, click two, clicked one, clicked two, okay? So that's something you can do as well. Another thing you can do is as the second argument, pass some kind of inf information to the parent. Uh, so let's say here, I want to say I am one. And down here, I'm gonna pass up to the parent uh, I hate you, okay? So here we'll do E. So this is an event. We'll pass event in. And rather than console.logging, whatever we want, we're going to do E.detail. Let's see what happens. I am one, okay? So here also we're going to do E.detail. So detail is whatever was passed here as the second argument. So this is the event name, and then this is the detail that's being passed up to the parent. So that's pretty handy. Um, before, what you might do if you didn't do this is have some function that you exported, and then you would uh, from the uh, like pass from the parent to the child, and then you would use that function here. But this makes it, I think, more clear what's going on. You just dispatch the event upward and let the parent handle it up here. OK, so those are kind of the simple cases. Um, I'm going to show you with something a bit more complicated. So smiley sign up. Let me just copy and paste this in into here. You don't need button anymore. Okay, smiley sign up. Okay, this is smiley sign up. It says please sign in. So what we have here is smiley says this. And we've got some event dispatchers here. And then down here we have our two components and our submit button. So I put type button, that way it doesn't actually submit the form. If there's no type, then it would be type submit and it would submit a form. Um, and then here's just some CSS. Okay, so what's going on here? So dispatch U, dispatch P. So this is a kind of general way to dispatch um, different uh, dispatch from different components. So, or you could, if you just had one, that would work too. So here from app.svelte, there's two different inputs. So I want to be able to handle both of them. And rather than writing out on input dispatch, uh, blah, 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 input, whatever, this will just e.type will be whatever this type is. So when username on input dispatch you, OK, what it's doing is e.type is input, because that's what it is, the type, and then plus u. So input u is how I would handle on input from username. So here, for example, input u, I want to say when that happens, uh, console.log, 
username changed. Okay, so now, oh, input u. Probably miss. Oops, I just need to. On input u, it's an event. Okay, so now it says username changed. Okay, and now I can just put that for everything. I could do on input, and then I could copy and paste on click, dispatch u, on focus, dispatch u. And what it's really dispatching is a um, input u, okay? You can call it whatever you want. I've just decided to add a u onto it for username and p for password. Okay, and similarly over here, dispatch p. So this would be called click p in the parent. That means password was clicked, or focus p. Okay, so that's one thing you can do just uh, to kind of save yourself some typing is have these functions. Okay, so the next thing you can do is kind of bind the props that are sent down from the parent to the child. Uh, bind them between the child and the parent. So it's not really binding, but with events, you can kind of uh, pass the value of username and password back up. So first, let's pass in username oops, and password. And let's show them up here so you can see as they change. And then smiley sign up, we're going to add export let username, export let password, like that. OK, so then down here, the value, I'm not sure if you need to do this, bind value equals username. And this, I'm going to delete that, find value equals password. And this will be on input. So whenever it changes, it'll dispatch an input um, event. OK, so here I've added this, e.target.value, e.target.value. So this will, whatever the value is of this, it'll pass it along uh, up to the parent. So up here, we just need to handle them um, on input u. So the username equals so the event and pass down will be e.detail. So we'll say username equals uh, e.detail. Oops, sorry, we don't need that. OK, so now when it changes, it'll update here. And this updates right there. And this will get passed down to uh, the prop like that. And that's why I'm not sure if we need to bind the value, because it'll get passed down to username, and then it'll um, be set here. OK, so yeah, I, I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it or not, but this is just kind of an idea to get you kind of thinking of how to keep them up to date with each other. So I'm not going to do it for password, but I'm going to show you one last thing here. So smiley says, if we pass smiley says as well, so now if I start typing, you'll see once I when I'm whenever I'm between zero and five length, then it'll say username must be more than five letters. Okay, so this thing I'll talk about in another video, but um, this is one way you can use a reactive statement. It's kind of like watching basically in this if statement, it's watching the username, and then um, as it changes, if it meets this condition, it'll set it to smiley says. So you could do this for multiple things if you wanted to have error checking for your um, uh, for your form. And by doing it this way with uh, event dispatching back up to the parent, you can kind of control from the parent uh, what the when to trigger the error messages and um, all of that. OK, so hope that made sense. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, by the way, I'm not suggesting you should actually do this for your login and password. This, I think people would be confused, some people at least. I'm not sure if it's accessible. So um, yeah, leave any questions or comments in the comments. And I believe that is all for this video.